You're watching CBS 12 News, the one to turn to. Well, breaking this noon, an active shooter situation now over at a naval base in Pensacola. Thank you for joining us. I'm Matt Lincoln. And I'm Terry Hornstein. In this noon for Ashley, four people are dead, including that shooter. This is the second shooting at a U.S. naval base in just the last three days. Yeah, right now, the naval air station Pensacola is closed down. The Escambia County Sheriff said you just don't expect something like this to happen. Walking through the crime scene was like being on the set of a movie. Uh, and as the mayor eloquently put, you just don't expect this to happen at home. Uh, this doesn't happen in Escambia County. It doesn't happen in Pensacola. It doesn't happen to uh, our friends and neighbors who are members of the United States Navy. But it did. Here's what we know so far. Again, four people are dead, including the shooter following the shooting this morning. Right now, the total number of those who were shot, we know that number is at 11. Officials say they got the initial call just before 8 o'clock this morning. Authorities say the shooting happened inside a classroom building on the base. It is not known if the shooter was a member of the military. And two sheriff's deputies were shot and taken to nearby hospitals. One is recovering, the other is in surgery, but neither is facing life-threatening injuries. Officials are working to notify families, and so they are releasing only limited information at this time. And moments ago, local authorities said they have spoken with Governor Ron DeSantis. He did send out this tweet as soon as the news broke this morning, saying he was keeping a close eye on the situation. And Florida's First Lady Casey DeSantis also tweeting out her sympathies with the families impacted. She also offered her prayers to the families. Again, taking another live look in Pensacola, authorities say they do not believe there were any additional shooters. 11 in total shot, four dead, including the suspect. We'll continue to follow the story on air and online. This latest shooting comes just 48 hours after a shooting at Pearl Harbor Naval Base in Hawaii. The suspect now identified as 22 year old, a 22 year old naval man in his uniform at the time of the shooting. And two male civilian shipyard workers were killed before he turned the gun on himself. A third civilian shipyard worker was also wounded. He was brought to the hospital in stable condition. National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day is tomorrow, December 7th. Well, it began as an armed jewel heist turned into a high speed chase and then ended in a shootout between more than a dozen officers and suspects, leaving four dead, including this man, the UPS driver, Frank Ordonez. He had just completed training. It was his first day on the job by himself. Moments ago, we heard from his stepfather, who says he wants a full investigation. I don't want this swept under the rug. My son was. If you look at the video, you, you can see that it was five different departments that were involved in this chase. My question, and, and I'm, not, I'm not an attorney, and, I, and I'm, I'm not uh, a police officer, but I, I'm a rational person, and, and reason tells me that where was, why didn't they secure the area? Our CBS 12's James Torres in Miramar right now with what we're learning now about the investigation. James? Yeah, Matt, we're taking a closer look at that scene right now. You can see behind me, it's the first look we have without that UPS truck here. Officers are still working to find out uh, what actually, uh, some really important details here. Most importantly, the big question, which gun fired the fatal shots killing the two innocent victims? That's why they're here this afternoon, although that answer we don't expect to have anytime soon considering the magnitude of this situation and the magnitude of this crime. As you mentioned, it started off with a robbery turned into a, uh, a, a multi-county chase, turned into a, uh, a hostage situation, then a uh, shooting that led to four deaths, one including that UPS driver and another innocent bystander. We had a chance to talk uh, to the mayor of the city here. He tells us that he's hoping the city will uh, work together to move forward. He also wants to offer support to people who are in these cars while the shooting happened. And with some new piece of information for you, I want to show you a, a new photo that we just got into our newsroom here. This man is Lamar Alexander. According to his family members, they confirmed to us that he is one of the suspects killed in this shooting. We'll have much more on that later from our Lulu Ortiz and much more on this entire situation and story coming up at three o'clock. As soon as we have more details and updates, we'll bring them to you both on air and online as well. For now, we're live in Miramar. I'm James Torres, CBS 12 News. 
Thank you, James. Our coverage of these developing stories does not stop here. Right now on CBS12.com, you can hear the full news conference from the naval base shooting. You can also learn more about the victims and the suspect as well in the deadly UPS shootout. That's all on our website, CBS12.com. Well, it's beginning to look at least a little like Christmas in Stewart. A live look at the holiday tree at City Hall downtown. If you're looking for something to do to enjoy tonight's brisk weather, you can take the uh, family down to the Stewart Holiday Parade. It's not really brisk. It's mild. It's nice. Kicks off tonight at 7 o'clock. The Stewart Holiday Parade uh, is, uh, has row closures beginning around 630 near Monterey and Ocean Boulevard. Let's check in now with CBS 12 meteorologist Zach Covey. We're in for a nice weekend. Yeah, a very nice weekend. In fact, we already have the sunny skies across the area. Yes, there are some clouds out there, but folks, like that live shot in Boca Raton, I assure you, those clouds are not hindering temperatures. In fact, we are very close to 80 degrees right now in Jupiter and Boca Raton. We are actually over uh, producing some of these temperatures. The models do not expect these type of temperatures this early in the day. So it is certainly a possibility that we will actually see temperatures reach and exceed the 80 degree mark this afternoon. Here's the culprit. This area of high pressure is the same one we talked about uh, for two three days back out through Louisiana. Remember, it's all due to the placement. When this high was back there, we had a northwest wind. Now that this high is off our coast, we have an east to even southeast wind. And that simple change of wind direction, that simple placement of the high, changes our temperatures completely. And as we go throughout the rest of the afternoon, we will continue to see our temperatures going up. And do we reach the 80 degree mark in several cities? I'll let you know that answer coming up in a bit. Thank you, Zach. If you've been watching CBS 12 News, you know throughout the day yesterday we held our own Bahamathon. Yeah, the goal of it is to help raise money for people in Grand Bahama and the Abaco Islands that were devastated by Hurricane Dorian. And CBS 12 News wanted to make sure the story was given the coverage it deserves, and we've spent several months bringing you exclusive reports and stories of how the areas hit the hardest by Hurricane Dorian are recovering and rebuilding. We also partnered with BahamasReliefCruise.org, who they're helping organize volunteers and donations and our friends as well at the Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line. O'Neill Kosha, or Kosa rather, the CEO of the company, spoke to us live during our 6 o'clock newscast yesterday. We are so humbled and uh, because of the empathy and the support mm -hmm. Palm Beach County has shown. And it's unbelievable people to people help and assistance that, that's overwhelming. And it's because of our, our viewers, we helped raise thousands of dollars that will go towards rebuilding efforts. So thank you to everyone who uh, helped us do this. We want to let you know Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line is also offering discounted tickets for December 12th and the 14th as well to anyone who wants to volunteer. Uh, if you want some information about this, you can just head to our website, cbs12.com. Well, we've got some great news for workers. Yeah, the U.S. economy has just added more than 250,000 jobs just last month. Why the unemployment rate is at a record low. And a new bill passed aimed at funding four historic colleges and universities right here in Florida. Adoption hearings can be very special for a child and his new parents, but it's what this five-year-old did that made his unforgettable. Here's a look at our Sky Team 12 drone shot of the day. This video is from Jensen Beach. It's gorgeous. Well, we've got some good news for workers. The U.S. economy added 266,000 jobs last month. Yeah, those gains include about 50,000 General Motors employees who returned to work after a six-week-long strike. Other jumps came from the healthcare sector, which added 45,000 jobs and an additional 45,000 jobs in leisure and hospitality. Well, getting adopted is an extraordinary feeling for a child. And one five-year-old boy made it extremely special. Yeah, Michael Orlando Clark Jr. invited his whole entire kindergarten <laughs> class to the Kent County Courthouse in Michigan to celebrate his official adoption. All of his friends there cheering him on. They had signs and everything. Michael, it was certainly uh, the best time of the year. Isn't that great? So great. So cute that he did that. He wanted mm -hmm. so many people to celebrate with him. Well, the Senate officially passed a bill to permanently fund historically black colleges and universities. Yeah, this was after federal funding had expired on October 1st. The bill known as the Future Act strives to strengthen historically black colleges and universities, as well as other minority serving institutions, by providing $255 million annually. There are four historically black colleges in Florida, FAMU, Bethune-Cookman, Edward Waters College, and Florida Memorial University. We're still ahead on CBS 12 News at noon. Road closures underway this weekend for the FIT team of the Palm Beaches Marathon. 
When we come back, CBS 12 News' Sam Kerrigan will tell you how you can avoid all that traffic. And a nationally ranked marathon runner debuts her skills this weekend at the Palm Beaches Marathon. Why this is a special race for her. We're certainly starting off very warm across the state of Florida, but there is a cold front to our north. So will these beautiful conditions continue through the weekend? I've got the answer when we come back. Stay with us. FEM, proud sponsors of the CBS 12 News Network, the one to turn to. Welcome back. We're following breaking news right now. I want to show you a tweet out of uh, Miami. The FBI has identified the two people they say are responsible for a robbery at a jewelry store that happened yesterday in Coral Gables that led on a chase and a shootout in Miramar on the highway. Those uh, people, they say those suspects, they say are responsible. Lamar Alexander, a 41 year old, we showed you his picture earlier. I believe we still have it also as well. The second suspect they say right now is Ronnie Jerome Hill, also 41 both of them out of Miami-Dade County. And we are still waiting for, for the uh, bystander, the fourth person uh, to be identified. But as we uh, spoke about earlier in the newscast, uh, we do know that the hostage that was taken, UPS driver Frank Ordonez, also passed away, uh, was uh, shot and killed in this incident. We have another breaking story. We're following this noon out of Boca Raton. You're looking live as police say at least one person was hurt when a car drove into a BP gas station. This is all taking place on Yamato Road and Congress Avenue. Police say the store attendant was driving a customer's car through the car wash and drove it right into the store. Just take a look at that. Wow. Police say the suspect took off but was later caught. We do know charges are pending here. This weekend, thousands of runners will hit the pavement for the Fit Team Palm Beaches Marathon. Yeah, our traffic jam Sam has a look at your traffic workarounds for the weekend. The Palm Beaches Marathon covers a lot of ground this weekend, but one of the major road closures is already in place right now. Flagler Drive is shut down between Banyan Boulevard and Lakeview Avenue, and it will be closed until Sunday at 7 o'clock in the evening. So you can work around that closure by taking Quadro Boulevard as an alternate. You can also use Olive Avenue and Dixie Highway as alternates. Now we do have a full list of all of the road and bridge closures on our website. Just head to CBS12.com. All right, thank you, Sam. And one of those runners, a Jupiter mom of four, who has already delivered impressive performances at a number of national races. CBS 12's Kara Deppi spent some time with her early this morning as she prepared for her first hometown race. Every morning, long before the sun comes up, 44-year-old Jennifer Sober puts on her running shoes and heads for the door. No music, just her and the sound of her feet hitting the ground. Your brain can just start cycling through um, the problems or dreams or ideas. And once you get to kind of a flow state, all of those things just get worked out in your head during the run. Running hasn't always been Jennifer's outlet. In fact, the then stay at home mom started just four years ago, right before her 40th birthday. I felt like my world was all about kind of serving them or my husband, and I needed to kind of reclaim something that was just for me. It started these like little 30 minute runs every other day, and at first I hated it. But then I found that on the days I wasn't doing it, I would crave doing it. Her passion soon took off, first running and winning her first 5K. Then she turned her focus to mastering the marathon. I was an introvert and a violist, classical violist my whole life. And I found that like when I got out on a race course and had to compete for something, that it brought out a whole side of me that I didn't even know that I had. Jennifer has since finished top 10 in her age group in national marathons like Boston and most recently Chicago. Let's go. And in the midst of all the early morning trainings, Jennifer is always back in time to send her four kids off to school. This is like the launch pad and I'll be sending them off to their bus stops or driving them to school and then I head into work. Her advice to anyone in need of a push to follow their dreams, just start somewhere. I don't do anything that's amazing or anything that's different than any other man or woman who's working and has kids. I just take small steps forward and that's how you can get to a goal. Reporting in Jupiter, I'm Kara Duffy, CBS 12 News. Such an inspiration. Jennifer says she's looking forward to the Fit Team Palm Beaches Marathon as it will be her first hometown race. She'll be running the half marathon on Sunday and we wish her luck. It's going to be a nice day, and it's a, you know, it's a nice night, too, for the 10K and the 5K tonight. So are yeah. you going, Matt? 
Yeah, oh, it's no. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be uh, amazing weather. Uh, so I say you guys go out and run it. You know, I've got to work tomorrow morning, but I I'll let you guys go and run it for me. A live look out there in Juneau Beach. Absolutely perfect conditions. Uh, you know what? The water looks great to even jump in. Maybe a little too cold for my liking, but some people may be heading on out and enjoying the water's edge. As we head into the rest of the afternoon, though, these temperatures will continue to go up. It makes sense. Storm track radar, nice and dry. We don't really have any rainfall to contend with. The only thing we really have to contend with is this. That is the subtropical jet stream. And you do notice, despite it actually moving from west to east, that's the, the flow, if you will, the wind direction, the actual jet itself is slowly diving to the south. So as it continues to do so, we're actually going to begin to introduce some dry air across the northern half of the state. And that dry air will eventually sag into South Florida, but that won't happen until tomorrow. So for today, we are expected to continue to see these partly cloudy skies across the area. But those clouds, like I said, will not hinder our temperatures. At the surface, we actually have onshore flow, and that will allow us to warm up into the upper 70s like we already are, and a few low 80s, especially for locations that are inland away from the water's edge. I wouldn't be surprised to see one or two 80 degree readings today across the interior of Palm Beach County. High res future cast for tonight continues to show that we will deal with those partly cloudy skies, at least for the first half of the night. Now comes in some of that drier air. Notice that the winds are actually shifting now out of the northwest. That is that drier air pushing in, pushes those clouds off of the coastline, but temperatures are still going to be very warm tomorrow as well. So today temperatures up there 77 to 79 across the southern half of Palm Beach County. Uh, very similar for the northern half and quite honestly, even for the Treasure Coast, we'll be sitting in the mid to upper 70s. So if you are heading out to that 5K or the 10K, temperatures in the lower 70s, the race will begin there 6 to 630 uh, over the area and then we'll top out with overnight lows in the 50s. Here's your seven day forecast, a 20% chance of a shower or storm Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Just can't rule it out, but overall we should stay dry. Hey, stay with us. A lot more CBS 12 news continues after the break. And welcome back. We're still following breaking news from Florida's Panhandle. Four dead, including a suspected shooter after a mass shooting at the Navy Air Station Pensacola. Total of 11 people shot there. We're expecting an update with authorities again this afternoon. You can follow our coverage on air and online on CBS12.com. Yeah, we'll have much more on the shooting in Miramar as well throughout the day, so keep it right here. Our next newscast coming up at 3.